The Lunar and Earth Show. The who and what now? Class, grab your FNAF encyclopedia books and turn the page nothing because they aren't there. Alright, so Five Nights at Freddy's. It needs no introduction. You all are aware of this franchise. I myself have talked about it once or twice, I don't know if to recount. There are plenty of games with each one impacting the series in their own way. However, Security Breach was an interesting case as it brought in a new generation of fans. These new fans had a craving for any form of Security Breach content, whether it was official or not. Enter the Security Breach Show, a channel that at first glance might look low effort, cringe as they say it, and another form of cheap content farm. Don't come back to me, I don't know if it is. The Security Breach Show originally started off as one channel, the Freddy and Funtime Freddy Show, but over time got spin-off shows. Think of it kind of like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, for kids. Except you should say that last part in public because you will not hear the end of that for a very, 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 very long time. I mean, look at these replies, they're still going! The most popular channel was not the first show, but instead, the Sun and Moon show. Now, I've made a video on this and the spinoff show that followed that you don't exactly need to watch, however, I still highly recommend checking them out. Okay, so it's just a bunch of FNAF channels focused on different characters. I still haven't explained how these two characters factor into all this. Hush, dear viewers, I'm getting there. Sun and Moon Show, remember that? I mentioned it this amount of time ago. It has the most lore going on, with the series introducing siblings to the daycare attendants. First, there's Lunar, and for the sake of time, all you need to know is that they were once trapped in Moon's head and eventually were freed into their own body. Then there's Earth, who 100% made her first appearance during the middle of a story arc and not at any other point, if you know, you know. At this point of the story though, Earth was forcefully shoved into Sun and Moon's life by their father, who looks like this, and this, for no other reason at the time than just because. These two are what we call fanon characters, a broad definition yet can be boiled down to original characters that were made by the fandom. In this situation, it was more so the Security Breach fandom than general FNAF fans that made them, but I digress. Nowadays, the Security Breach show version of these characters are the most popular. Oh, okay, so now we have a basic understanding of everything. Uh, why though? Why do I care so much over a show like this? Well, it isn't just a show, it's THE show. The show ever. It has so many things to it like visuals, having characters talk, having characters talk with the text at the bottom being the visuals. Oh, and I may be getting forced to make this video by someone. Because of that though, I'm gonna refrain from mentioning a certain green gator. They're invisible to me because of this mysterious person potentially going fan go crazy if they're merely mentioned. So whether you're a fan of the show, a hater, or this is your first time hearing about any of this, please do sit and listen to one of the stories that was ever told because trust me, it's a wild one. September 9th, 2023 was a magical day for Security Breach show fans as the Lunar and Earth show was created alongside the first upload. It was also a magical day for people who are fans of my channel. I just so happened to be around when this was premiering and decided to leave a message in chat and got a couple people recognizing me so um, hey guys. As for the content within the video, we have a standard setup to justify the series existence. Lunar within the Sun and Moon show went through some pretty traumatic stuff thanks to the villain of that show, Eclipse. Earth thinks that creating a channel with Lunar could be just what he needs as it would be a new chapter in his life that would let him be able to fully move on from past events. Also, it's seen as a great way for the two to bond together more. Moving forward, instead of just telling the entire storyline in order beat for beat, I think it would be much better to talk about the stars of the show in their own section, with the first section being about Earth. Earth is a character I'd say was my second favorite thing to come out of this cinematic universe, even if I've made previous remarks of her looking like a model Think Noodle would use. She's nice, calm, and shows to be great in comforting others. Hopefully her therapy skills work on herself because the show starts to present some daddy issues. Yes, I love witnessing FNAF and father problems being mixed into one. Here's the missing poster for my priorities if you want to help me find it. It's common knowledge within the show's universe of just how much the creator sucks, however Earth seems to dismiss any negative information about him. At first, I was taking this as Earth being herself, you know, very forgiving. However, as the show continues, straight up starts not remembering certain events with her dad. It then gets to the point where the mere mention of the creator makes her black out for a short period of time. So what's going on here? Well, in one of the earlier videos, the creator shuts his daughter down and brings her back to his base where he gives her some updates. One of these would be for Gore, a thingamajig that just kind of lives in her head. I'm getting a little ahead of myself with this one, but this is what the character sounds like in their introduction episode. No, I don't forget anything. And this is what they sound like in a later episode. Nothing's wrong. I'm just here to 
Oh no, this isn't some error in the show. It's actually explained that the voice simply changed off screen. The way it's said though. I'm sorry, I'm still getting used to my voice. I forgot how we were talking. Um, let's me use my imagination to think they probably just forgot how they spoke. And if that's the case, <laughs> it's moments like these I live for. It's amazing, and honestly, I see that's something I would do. I mean, imagine if I actually forgot how I talked, so they switched voices on you. Speaking of switching, during this period, we have the return of my number one most favorite character and villain in the whole Security Breach show cinematic universe, Blood Moon. Oh yeah, viewers from this video, you know how I am. Blood Moon, my beloved. It's great, because last time we saw him, he was... Not exactly alive. Yes, he's mainly on the Sun and Moon show and doesn't get much appearance on this show, though that still will not distract me. Nothing will, as long as I get to see that beautiful red what is this. <sighs> Alright, so within the stupider and stupider show, there was this new villain who brought Blood Moon back from from the from the dead. And he switched to the Disney there. The design is fine, I guess. If I'm being completely honest with you, though, seeing Blood Moon go from this to this made me feel like that one rant video about Sonic 4. The one that's all like, Ah! Oh, I'm so infuriated right, right now. now. This, this is, is a, a complete, complete turn, -off. turn off. It's, 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 it's incredibly misleading. misleading. I'm only complaining about the design because everything else is just as great as I remembered it being. In his comeback video, he has easily the greatest scene in the entire series. Okay, so to fill you all in the context of this scene, Blood Moon returns to torture and potentially end Lunar. He then gets the idea to make Earth beg for him not to hurt Lunar, and the following scene happens. Come on, promise me money, power, anything you have. I could give you everything I have, though it is very little and only reserved to plushies and collectibles of various animes and movies I watch. What? Sadly, I, I mean, thankfully, Blood Moon loses control over the situation and gets beaten up. Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Get away! Stop! <laughs> Okay, that's, that's also, um, <laughs> you, sorry, not sorry to switch the focus of this section from Earth to Blood Moon. Wait, there's also a major part between the two that does affect the rest of the series, in which a later episode has Blood Moon returning once more to completely destroy Earth. He succeeds in doing so to the point where she has to be rebuilt from the ground up by the creator. The new design, I'll give props to because it actually does look like an improvement from the last one. A fun thing I like to do is to zoom in on her face just enough to where her nose will become her mouth. Comedy. Gold. I don't know if it was just me, or the design slightly changed Earth's personality a little, because following episodes make her a little more confident. She attempts to get answers from creator of why she's forgetting often, another episode has her standing up for herself, and you know what's important because that's the title of the video, and she's also able to score her first kiss with her partner that I failed to mention up until now because, well, it's the green gator she's dating. The blue guy lives at Fun fact, the Green Gator dates way back to a different Security Breach show, being the sun and- Oh, hang on, I should probably take this call. Look at you. Oh, god, the things I wish I could do to you right now. You have any idea, like, how how, how angry it, I, it, it, it was for me to hear, like, Oh, he premiered on the Sun and Moon show! No, you f Oh. Oh, you better censor those words. The next part of Earth's story has her gain the help of Lunar to move for Gore for good, and you know, it kinda works. I mean, it just does that, and then gets trapped in the house. With Fergor finally taken care of though, Earth can finally remember things, leading to a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her dad. For once in any of these shows, the creator seems like he's finally opening up. He explains that he's done so many things that have ruined the relationships he's had with his other creations. He only added Fergor so he can salvage the only positive one he has left. As much as I like to make fun of these shows, this moment actually hits close to home. He tells Earth that she was created so he can at least have one child that didn't despise him, but realize over time, keeping her trapped in his base was inhumane. He then sent her off to her brothers so she could have a life, even if it meant far from him. For Gore is only a part of Earth, so he could prevent their relationship from being ruined. He ends this scene by telling her how much he loves her, before they both go their separate ways to process everything that had just happened. Oh, then Lunar comes in and asks the computer AI system that the daycare has installed to fact check everything the creator just said, and turns out 99% of it was a lie. And the biggest one was that he loves her. Oh my fizzy faz. Yeah, it takes a hot minute for Earth to learn that everything she was told was a complete lie. When she does, that's when creator returns to show his true colors. 
He says her real reasoning for existing was purely payback to Fazbear Entertainment, who fired him after designing Sun and Moon. Earth was then made to be the best version of the daycare attendants, and then was sent off to the daycare to be used as a way for the creator to spy on everyone. Huh, you know creator, if you really wanted to spy on everyone, you know they got shows of these guys, you could just watch them. After all this is revealed, Sun enters and tells him to leave, and never come back. Creator then makes one last super evil remark, saying how this isn't the last time they'll be seeing him. Alright, so that's his last appearance within the story, and really the last part of Earth's story as of right now. Nothing else major happens to her, other than a slight redesign. While it's the best one yet, unfortunately it looks like we lost a nose that kinda looks like a mouth. Hold on though, this is called the Lunar and Earth show, so obviously we still got a whole other character to talk about. I'll be honest, I don't have as much to say about Lunar as I do Earth, mostly because Lunar gets shoved into situation after situation with barely explanation of anything. You'll see what I mean, as the storyline begins with him gaining superpowers in which he can affect the weather based on his emotions. How did he get this, I'm sure you're wondering? Well, insert another Sun and Moon show mention. This one is important because the villain of that show, Eclipse, killed Lunar. Here's that scene. Monty, please! How dare you cut back to me thinking I would ever joke about that scene. Months later, he would be rebuilt. In space, and that would give him powers. Please don't start questioning the show. This newfound power would spawn the interest of a new character from the galaxy up above, Gemini. Gemini is the entity of two beings, being Pollux and Castor. Castor is the serious one, and Pollux is the fun one. They track down Lunar to determine whether he's a threat or not to... something. Alright, this is the part where you can see why I don't have much to say about Lunar, as he's told all the stuff that's going on in space, but we don't ever actually see any of it and have a vague idea of the situation. In which Lunar needs to master his power and show self-control over it to prove he isn't a threat? Gemini, as I'll call them both for the sake of time, makes it clear that they'll only stick around for a short period of time to train Lunar into learning all his powers. Over the course of the show, however, we see their relationship grow from a teacher and a student to lovers, sorta. It all starts when the Green Gator sets up Lunar unknowingly to a date with Gemini, and the video at first doesn't seem all too crazy, until the two morph together. I hate how this is like something I have to write down for the lore document, but like, Lunar has a thing for tall people, and this does something for him. A later video has Lunar confessing he has feelings towards Gemini, and they don't exactly understand as they don't really understand emotions at all, causing them to momentarily shoot Lunar down. It eventually seems like things could work out with a double date video with Lunar, Gemini, Earth, and the Green Gator. All seems well at this point in the story. Lunar seems to know how to control his powers, he's now going on dates with Gemini, and then Eclipse returns from the dead. I'm sure throughout everything I've said though, this is a test for Lunar's character arc to truly show how much he's grown as a character. Never mind. Lunar's trauma gets the better of him and because of that, everything falls apart. Earth was there to witness Eclipse go in and was traumatized from the event, now needing some distance from Lunar. Gemini now has to leave the planet and go to space to explain to the Overlord or something, again I barely know what's going on up there, of why Lunar is still good even when he used his power for revenge. Gemini makes their exit from the story, and now we're left with Lunar in a worse state than he was at the start of the show. And uh, yeah that's pretty much it. Honestly, the reason I split up the video like this to talk about one character at a time is because Earth and Lunar barely interact with each other's storyline. It's kind of ironic, what was meant to be a show to bring them together and move on from trauma did the complete opposite. One of the final videos we're looking at has the two in the room together and talking things out of all the things they've been through, with their relationship breaking down even more by the end of it. Huh, this truly seems like we're going to be leaving the series on a sad note like that. Oh, never mind, the next video is them reacting to FNAF stuff and having a grand old time. No, actually there was a recent video where they finally made up and everything seems to be at least at a satisfying point for now. It's clear these channels are going to go on for a good while and honestly, I don't think it's half bad for what is essentially content farm. For me, binging all these videos, it had its nice moments, nice characters, and overall good intentions with the morals. So you know what, if you enjoy it for any of those reasons, great. Me, on the other hand, I'm finding a completely different form of entertainment from just how much of a show this is. You'd be surprised how after all this talking I did, I still missed a lot of things. That's what makes doing these videos kind of fun though, seeing all this stuff unfold over the course of many months, and then trying my best to explain it all in one cohesive video without cluttering it with stuff that's irrelevant in the grand scheme of things like Jacko Moon. Returning to the darkness. Okay, we'll just have uh... 
<laughs> I can't wait for all the comments bashing me for not giving that character a 10 minute section. I don't think I'll ever do that because for those who don't know, I don't plan on making any more Security Breach show related videos. So please only subscribe for general FNAF content and maybe more. To wrap things up here, overall, this show is one of the shows ever, if that wasn't obvious. Great job everyone. My only complaint would be all their meeting a character videos, because they still haven't made what is easily the best meetup idea. Lunar and Earth meet the blue- ah! What the- Oh no. It's me, Monty, from the hit show, the Monty Gator and Foxy Show! Oh no, it's Monty, from the hit show, the Monty Gator and Foxy Show. Look at the sigmas you become! Look at how Elle Reed you are! How skippity toilet you are! You are woke among sussy soy jacks! I gave you gants in Ohio! Oh, hey, little guy. <laughs>